You came. I wasn't sure you would. Like I said, you would have been smarter not to. Alright then, come over here. This is a warehouse. Have you not seen a warehouse before? There's nothing special about this one. Not anymore, anyway. I worked a job here not long ago. That isn't something I'm ready to share yet. First, we have some business to do. You being here is the first step. Now we'll see if that's as far as you go. I'm not being cryptic to be mean. I'm protecting myself. The less I share, the better for me. It's something I've learned over the years. Keeping myself to myself tends to be the smart move. But you... You are the chatty type. An open book, even. Your heart is so stuck to your sleeve that it would take a jackhammer to get it off. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't mind outgoing people. I don't mind friendly people most of the time. I mind inquisitive ones, but like I said, you remind me of someone. Or maybe it's the fact that you're so interested in the lore that you think you know. Or maybe it's because I haven't bothered to get to know anyone in a while and I'm a little bored. Whatever the reason, here you are. Despite my better judgment. Sit right here. Yep, right here. If you want this to go any way other than you leaving here with even less understanding than you came with, you will do exactly as I say. Smart. Or stupid, that remains to be seen. Now then. The Legends. Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. The peak of chivalry and honor and blah blah blah. What is it that draws you to it? Yeah, we talked about the code, and how hollow it sounds to cite it in this day and age. Oh, it's not a bad thing to want to live a good life and make the world a better place. And I understand being fascinated by old stories. I was once fascinated myself. But when you blur the line between fantasy and reality, it becomes a problem. Like I said, they're just stories. Chivalry is real, but Arthur was no saint. And Camelot... No era in history is worthy of putting on a pedestal. Least of all that one. So if you're painting castles in the clouds because you think there was some perfect time in the past, a time that you think is worth trying to get back to, you're terribly misguided. Like I said, I have no problem with stories. As long as they stay stories. Cautionary tales entertainment, bedtime books for children. All fine. But you, your interest goes way past the academic. That much is clear. Passion is fine. Being excited about what you do for a living is fine. I am not criticizing your chosen field of study or your dedication to it. I'm criticizing a zealous attachment to a point in time that didn't actually exist. I'm criticizing the advocacy of a life and a code that is almost impossible to maintain, especially in a vacuum. I'm just... I'm trying to help you. And your students. Because the higher you put something on a pedestal, the harder it falls. And it does always fall. You're right, I didn't bring you out here just to talk about your curriculum. You said you want to live by the code. I happen to know a thing or two about that. And I also allow for the possibility that, as much as you are enthusiastic for something that never was, I may also be more cynical than I should be. I've been around a long time. I've seen way more than I care to admit. Things that make me question my faith in humanity, in a higher power, in anything good, really. Humans are brutal, nasty creatures. They do brutal, nasty things. Oh, of course you're different. You're special. Let me tell you one thing right now, my would-be knight. No one is special. The best anyone can hope for is to work their ass off and try to rise just a little bit above the muck. And it does take work. 
because at base, you are animals. You feel more than you think, you act more than you consider, and you screw up more than you achieve. Yes, you. Of course not me. I'm not human. There's not a lot of sense in keeping that secret here and now. You just argue the point anyway. One fairy at your service. And before you ask, no, I don't have wings. No, I don't have a wand. And yes, I will definitely kill you if you piss me off. How's that? Stop talking. <sighs> now, you can leave if you want to. I won't stop you. Because honestly, all that's happened here is a conversation. And if you try to tell people what I am, you'll end up getting a psych eval and I'll go on my merry way. Fairies aren't real, you know. Of course we aren't. Just like Camelot wasn't real. It was, but not in the way you think. I would know. I was there. Of course I was. I was young and stupid, but I was there. A lot of fairies were. It was a turbulent time. There was a lot of power changing hands, and a lot of ill-conceived quests being undertaken. I bet. I'm sure you'd like me to tell you all about it. And I probably will, over time. But first you have to do something for me. Of course you do. Nothing's free. This conversation tonight is only the beginning. Unless you're feeling in over your head. For someone who claims to know about fairies, you don't seem to know much about how we work. Toying with you is part of my fun. Fairies aren't nice. We aren't friendly. And we sure as hell don't care what happens to humans, beyond how it affects our world. That's where my job comes in. Obviously, I live among humans. I have hobbies, I audit classes and such to keep myself busy, but I also have a job. It's a job I've had for a very long time, since the old days, actually. Let's say I take care of imbalances. When there's a concentration of power that could tip the scales, when there's a person or being who's getting too big for the space they occupy, when there's a chance that the order in the universe could be disrupted, I step in. As non-violently as possible. But to be honest, there's usually violence. Nothing I'm not prepared for. Does it matter what sort of weapon I use? Rather bloodthirsty question coming from you. I prefer a bow. Nothing too fancy. What do you mean? I could use a sword if I chose to. I just don't like them. Too restrictive. Too close quarters. <laughs> what do you think swords are made of? Seriously? No. Swords are made of carbon steel, usually. There's iron in that, but it's an alloy, so it's not pure. Fairies aren't hurt by it. Can you imagine how difficult life would be if we couldn't touch anything with even a trace amount of iron in it? Even human blood has iron. The average human has four grams of iron in them. Think about it. I still prefer a bow. I like some space between me and my target. And yes, before you ask, the bow is special. And I'm not going to go into detail about how. That's none of your business. There's no boss. I work alone. I can sense when there's something I need to deal with, like I did in this warehouse not long ago. Vigilante is a strong word. I'm just doing a job to keep the world in balance. Someone has to. That's a long story, and not one you need to know. Just accept this and move on, okay? Otherwise we'll be here all night. Okay. I've been around for a while, taking care of things here and there, and in that time I admit that I've grown a bit... cold. Fairies aren't all that warm and fuzzy anyway, but a dozen or more centuries of watching humans be awful has a way of cementing the negativity. I started hanging out in academia, trying to find some better vibes. People with enthusiasm for learning and passion for things they care about. People like you. Your classes entertain me. You want your students to learn, but also to become better people. It's sweet. A bit misguided, but sweet. 
Look, I made a decision to invite you here and explain these things to you. I thought it would be entertaining, maybe a fun challenge. You want to learn a little something about chivalry. I think you should learn a little about how the world actually works. So here we are. I don't have anything to prove. I just... At some point, that light in your eyes will go out. Your enthusiasm for the lore and the code will be overtaken by the same cynicism that overtakes everyone eventually. I'd like to maybe soften that blow a bit. Keep some of that light alive for as long as possible. I've failed before, but maybe I'll get lucky with you. It's nothing. Here. This is the first test. It's a sweet. You like sweets, right? Very good. If you eat something I give you, you're tied to me in the fairy world. And extricating yourself from that is a lot harder than you probably think it is. So it's your choice. Eat the sweet and come further with me down this rabbit hole, or give it back and go on your way. Take all the time you need to think about it. Also, consider that after all this, I might still be lying. I might just be a delusional human who's taking you on a merry chase. And eating that will do nothing at all. It's possible. I haven't shown you anything in the way of proof yet. Nothing of what I really am. And I won't. Not until you make your choice. What do you think? What do you believe? Look inside yourself and figure out what reality you think is the true one. And then make your choice. Okay, I didn't actually mean take all the time you need. You can't ponder this for weeks. I need to know your decision. If you give it back, I let you leave. You go on your way, back to your office and your books and your enthusiastic interpretations of the world of Arthur Pendragon. I may drop into a class or two in the future. I may not. None of it will matter because you'll be safely back in your regular life. I won't approach you again. And if you approach me, I'll act as if I don't know you. If you eat it, well, that would be telling now, wouldn't it? What'll it be, Professor? Mediocre adherent to a long-dead code? Zealous supporter of a pretend past? What do you choose? Interesting. The die is cast, as they say. How do you feel now? Yeah? Blink a few times for me. Look around. Anything look different? Well, that little treat had some magic attached. For now, and for a little while, you have the sight. That's why I wanted to meet you here. I wanted you to see with fresh eyes, if you made that choice. I wanted you to see what remains here, of what I do. Well, look around. What jumps out at you? There you go. Now you can see the runes. They're faint, but they still glow. What else? That is blood. Not entirely human, which is why you can see it now. I won't go into details, but suffice it to say it's there for a good reason. Me? What do you see in me now? Very good. My glamour no longer works on you. That's as expected. Not that different from humans. Just a few things here and there. Enough to make the glamour necessary. I... thank you, I think. I mean, beautiful by fairy standards isn't the same as humans, but I appreciate the sentiment. Okay then, you made a choice. And now, you can't turn back. Any regrets? You may have a few in the future. Come on then. We're leaving. There's no need for us to be here anymore. You made your choice. Now we move on. Uh-uh-uh. Too late for questions. You should have thought of that before. Come, take my hand. We have places to go. Don't make me compel you. You know I can. Very good. Get that chivalry of yours ready. It's going to be an interesting journey.
Hey, sweetness. If you like what you hear, don't forget to click subscribe so you can hear more. Also check me out over on Twitch. And if you want to support me, Patreon. Thanks for listening.